This training episode is about five hacks that I've used over the years that have improved my climb performance tenfold. <laughs> things that when I found out about them, they changed the game forever and I'm still using them to this day and still getting tons and tons of benefit from them. So what do I mean by a hack? Well honestly, these are things that you can implement straight away to your climb performance. You're not necessarily going to have to train to get stronger or train these things to get better, but they're going to be things you can implement right away into your climbing and get benefits directly from them. Alright guys, hack number one. Time to stick those tricky heel hooks with a heel cam. Everybody thinks they know how to heel hook, but I have a hack that's gonna make things a hundred times better. The pros and the master heel hookers know what they're talking about, but this hack is gonna give you more control, more support, and altogether more power when you're sticking tricky heel hooks in on a hold. So this hack is called the heel cam, and it's basically just placing your heel on a hold at a particular angle which allows the heel to create pressure against the hold and the wall which then locks it in place. So the best way to do this is to open your hips up when you're placing the heel and to place the heel at an angle on the hold, usually around 45 degrees away from the wall. And then you close your hips, tilting the your, your toe kind of more towards the wall and that action will cam your heel against the hold and the wall surface, creating that really heavy amount of pressure and support that you need to keep your heel in contact with the hold. If you didn't use this heel camming technique, you would just find that your heel was less stable. It might slip off and you just won't have as much support or power through your foot for doing hard moves. So watch out guys, one thing to take into consideration, not every heel is gonna take a heel cam. For example, if you've got a massive sloper and you're just slapping your heel on and using a lot of compression to keep your heel there, that's not gonna require a heel cam. However, if you have, a, say, a smaller heel hook or a point where the angle changes and there's a position where you can get camming between that point and the hold, then, you will be able to use a heel cam. Trust me when I say this guys, this hack is honestly one of the best hacks I found in climbing. It's allowed me to do some of my hardest climbs to date, being able to rest in positions where I never thought possible to rest and just all together, it's one of the best things I've ever found in climbing. Okay guys, now it's hack number two. Get a better grip on your pinches with the vice grip hack. Pinches might seem simple enough, but you'd be amazed at how many climbers aren't gripping their pinches in the most effective manner. The vice grip hack is simply a way of holding a pinch which is gonna give you much stronger, and uh, more grip on pinches, but also the ability to create much more powerful moves off pinches and still maintain a solid grip on them. So you basically do it by half crimping the edge of the pinch and then squeezing with the thumb on the opposing side. You may call it a crinch because it's halfway between a half crimp and a pinch. So when you first start climbing, everybody pinches like this. It's a very open-handed pinch grip position. The vice grip works a lot better, however, because by getting the fingers in a crimped up position, you focus more of the force through the fingertips and get a lot better leverage off that hold. So one thing to watch out for though, is the vice grip pinch is a really high energy output grip type. And what I mean by that is it takes a lot out of the muscles and the forearm to pinch a hold like this. So if you were to grip every pinch on a hard route like this, you'll get pumped really fast. So it's definitely a good grip, grip type to have in your arsenal for when you really need to squeeze the hell out of a pinch.
All right, guys, and it's now time for hack number three. Time to take the weight off with a cheeky wee knee bar. The knee bar has suffered a lot of controversy over the years. People saying it's not a legitimate technique. And that has meant a lot of people have avoided it. However, it is a technique. Of course it is. It's an amazing skill that if you can use well, it can not only allow you to get cheeky rests on your hard climbs, but can also allow you to do more difficult moves with ease and allow you to climb harder, faster. So why not use it? You know I love a cheeky knee bar. My girlfriend says, if I was a Pokemon, I'd be a knee bar. Who's that Pokemon? Knee bar bar bar. So the knee bar is a technique, but I'm calling it a hack because it's something that a lot of people just don't know about or don't use. The knee bar is basically the ability to put the pressure from your foot through your knee and channel it into the rock, which then allows you to take weight off your hands for a rest or to do a more difficult move. So you may have heard as well of the lesser known knee scum, which differs slightly from the knee bar. In my mind, a knee bar is when your full part of your knee is going into a hold and taking quite a lot of weight off your hands. However, a knee scum is more like when the side of your knee or the upper part of your thigh just kind of rests against the rock or the wall and creates a bit of friction, allowing a little bit of alleviation of weight from your hands. So how do you actually do a knee bar? Well, it's actually very simple. Stick your foot on a foothold, shove your knee behind a big massive hold, and there you go. Boosh, bash, bosh, done. However, I'm using this as a hack right now because that is something you can instantly apply to your climbing. However, to master the knee bar and all the possibilities that it offers, you will need to put some practice in. A lot of it will be getting comfortable with your knee being pushed against certain surfaces, discovering how different footholds and different angles of your foot will make it easier, experimenting with body positions and such like. If you want us to do a special video all about knee bars, comment below and let us know because that's certainly something we can do. In almost every scenario I can think of where I have found a knee bar, it has helped me massively. A great knee bar will get you back to full recovery and maybe a not so great knee bar will still give you that five or 10%, which is gonna give you the recovery needed to finish off and send your climb. The hardest climbs in the world have been done with knee bars. Adam Ondra on Silence 9C, he was using a knee bar. So why not us? Why can't we use knee bars to make us perform at our very max and get the most out of our climbing? Final word of caution for you guys, knee bars can be painful and my knees are definitely taking a beating over the years. I would advise using some long climbing pants get some tough material to be able to handle the abrasion and the pain that you might suffer. You can also get knee pads, which are rubberized things you can shove over your knees. They certainly make some knee bars a lot easier and a lot less painful, but when you're learning, it, you definitely don't need them. Okay guys, it's now time for hack number four. And this one is a special one. It's my favorite. How to hold on harder with less pump. The secret quarter crimp. Now I have traveled the world and spoken to many climbers, professionals and amateurs. And there's not one climber I have met who has recognized this grip type and who's actively utilizing it as a, in their performances and in training. And I think it's one of the biggest secrets that I have as a climber that I want to give to you guys. So what is this hack the quarter crimp actually do? Well, it's gonna give you more efficiency as a climber. It's gonna allow you to hold onto holds with less pump and also allow you to pull super hard at the same time. So you guys may have heard of the full crimp, the half crimp and the open hand but have you heard of the quarter crimp? The quarter crimp is like a fusion between the open hand and the full crimp. The full crimp allows the mechanical advantage of the thumb to maintain contact, 
but it's a very aggressive position and requires a lot of energy. An open hand, however, doesn't allow any mechanical advantage from the thumb and is a very weak position overall, but it's very efficient. You may ask then, why not use the half crimp? The problem with the half crimp is it's actually a very inefficient hold type to use. It requires a lot of muscular strength to engage your fingers in this way and has no mechanical advantage with the thumb. The quarter crimp combines an open hand position like this, which is a very efficient style, but then you put your thumb over your index like so, and then you have mechanical advantage of the thumb. Therefore, the quarter crimp. So there's several examples of times when a quarter crimp would be really useful, such as when you don't need as much power as a full crimp, but you need more power than an open hand. That is like a perfect example, such as when you're climbing long sustained sections which are of lots of hard moves, but not at your max. So you need to maintain efficiency throughout that. Another really apt example is when you've got uh, crimps that are blocked above by either a roof or another hold. So full crimping actually becomes impossible. <clears throat> In those examples, climbers usually go for a half crimp, but half crimp is actually a lot weaker than, uh, than a quarter crimp. In many, in, in many situations. So that's when I would use a quarter crimp. So the quarter crimp can be a little bit of a head spinner, hard to get your head around what it actually is, but I implore you guys to really stick with it and try and learn this amazing new grip type so that you can utilize it as part of your arsenal of tools for climbing at your utmost best. Make up your mind, don't care if you all right guys, we're on the fifth and final hack. Time to jump further with this super simple dino hack. So often when doing dinos, the holds can just seem so far away. You might be trying this dino over and over again and not getting any closer. And the hold just seems impossibly far away and no matter how hard you pull, you're just not able to make it. Well, my super simple dino hack should help with this and the colds will feel so much closer than they ever have before and you'll be feeling like you can jump further than you ever possibly imagine. Okay guys, so the dino hack is simply this. Pull in and then push. But what do I mean by that? Well, imagine an L-shaped curve. When we're dynoing, we need to pull in towards the wall and then push upwards. 90% of the power on all dynos comes from the legs. So we need to give our legs that springboard position to be able to give as much power to the dyno as possible. And that is how we're gonna be able to make large dynos. So often when I see climbers attempting dynos, I see them doing a couple of different things that are fundamentally wrong. A lot of climbers will push through their legs and then pull. But the problem with this is as they push through their legs first, they end up being pushed outwards away from the wall and don't get the height towards the hold that they wanna grab. The, the second thing that I see climbers doing is pulling and pushing simultaneously at the same time. Now, once again, that is okay, but you won't get the range of movement that you really want to get from a dyno because you're not allowing your legs to get the spring that they desire when you pull in first. Okay guys, to recap the dyno hack, we're pulling in first and then pushing through our legs to get the distance. However, there's one thing I want you to watch out for, and that is some climbers who do this pull upwards with their arms instead of in towards the wall. If you pull upwards and then push with your legs, again, legs won't have the springboard they need to make full distance. So we're really wanting to pull in towards the wall and then springing through our legs to get that power and to get that distance.
All right, guys, and that concludes my top five super top secret hacks for your climbing. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have got any ideas of other hacks or you want me to cover any other training ideas, then comment below and let me know. And we can cover it in a new episode for the channel. But until then, guys, make sure you subscribe, ding that wee bell for notifications, and until then, I'll catch you later.